Few games are genuinely scary, and a truly terrifying title in the 8-bit era was a rare thing indeed. In this video, we're looking at a game that might be the very first in the survival horror genre. Ant Attack, as the title adequately explains, pits you against a horde of formidably formic foes. Set in the city of Antesha, named for its puzzling Escheresque structures and aforementioned insectoid inhabitants. Armed with a limited supply of grenades and facing a swarm of unrelenting enemies, discretion was the key to success. The quicker you were able to complete a rescue, the easier the task would be. The process itself was simple. You need only lead those in distress to safety outside the city walls. Linger too long inside and the ants would swarm, bite your character and sap your health. Take too many hits and you'd succumb to their sting. Released in 1983, near the start of the ZX Spectrum's rise to popularity, Ant Attack was produced by one-man development team Sandy White. With a degree in sculpture, White was an unorthodox candidate for games programming, with similarly unusual methods. The entire soft-solid 3D engine was handwritten in machine code to fit in a paltry 4 kilobytes of space. With an early working title of 3D Ant, and also later known as Ant Terror before release, the final title, Ant Attack, was eventually decided by the publisher. Although the publishing industry was then nascent, built on a fledgling gaming scene, far from the big business it is now, White secured a deal with Quicksilver, who had scored a string of early successes with titles such as Mind Out and Velna's Lair. They were also one of the few publishers to use colour cassette sleeves, a step above the usual monochromatic fare at the time. Of course, Ant Attack was innovative beyond its box, and can lay claim to a number of firsts. On the face of it, the game seems almost misogynistic. You have to rescue your seemingly helpless girlfriend from the horde of ants. But the game actually offered you a choice of gender, so you could reverse the roles and play as the girl. Character names were unimaginative to say the least. The male and female characters were dubbed he and she, respectively. No choice of a same-sex rescue, however, but I suppose gender equality at least was a step forward in 1983. The unique 3D presentation of the city really set the game aside. It was arguably the first isometric video game in the world. Some might say arcade title Zaxxon was the first, but the scrolling shooter lacked some degrees of movement, so it became a question of semantics. In any case, for the home system, Ant Attack was remarkable, and allowed full freedom of movement about the city, even allowing you to climb the fanciful structures to escape the mandibles below. It wasn't until over a year later, with the release of Marble Madness and Night Law, that isometric games started to become more common. Sandy White went on to release a sequel in 1984's Zombie Zombie, although Ant Attack would be the game he was most remembered for. Quicksilver remained active during the 1980s, although post-1984 their output slowed. That year saw the acquisition of the company by Argus Press Software, later known as Grand Slam Entertainment. The Quicksilver name was last seen on the 1989 home releases of Packland, after which it was quietly retired, never to be seen again. Ants remained a moderately popular topic for games of the period, and perhaps Quicksilver's finest was the inspiration behind other ant-based games, such as It Came From The Desert, Sim Ant, and the appearance of giant ants in more recent titles such as the Fallout series. There's no doubting that Ant Attack was a pioneering title, a technical triumph for its small size, and oddly terrifying despite its simplicity. Join me next time when we'll be delving into the delights of another hidden gem from yesteryear. Until then, farewell.